Hello everybody, I'm Harry Jenkins. Today you're gonna to see images and you're gonna see video. On each video, I'm gonna let it run one time. I won't say anything. On the second run, I'm gonna talk about it so we can have a conversation about what needs to be done, what was good, what was a takeaway, and what was an opportunity to get better. Right now, I'm gonna start off with the initial setup and primary area coverage for trail. The basic starting position is at or inside the 28 foot mark. Every position has a primary coverage. And we need to know all positions because you're not going to be married to trail for the duration of the game. As you can see, trail is in the blue area. Trail is responsible for the nearest sideline and the division line. Trail is also responsible for marking all threes in that blue area. We only need one marker. Two markers means two sets of eyes on one player. No, don't follow the bouncing ball. One marker and Trail got the mark in his blue area, his or her blue area. Trail is also responsible for closely guarded in that blue area. There are gonna be some plays where it will start clearly in Trail, but the dribble drive is gonna take him or her toward the green area, and when the violation is called, it may be in the green area. Well, that's not C's call. Trail started with it, Trail had a visible count, Trail stepped in, Trail called the violation, instant credibility. Trail is also responsible for chopping the clock on all front court throw-ins, whether the throw-in is initiated by Lee or by Trail. They chop the clock. Trail is also responsible for goaltending and basket interference. Let's talk about stepping down. We need to step down on every shot, whether it's a free throw or a field goal attempt. Don't bail, stay engaged. Great job stepping down. Okay, let's take a look at Trail. Trail is on top of the play, and now Trail is closing down because the play is closing down. Trail is below the 28-foot mark. By the time Trail landed, he's on a three-point arc. Great job closing down. Position adjustments continues. Let's talk about obtaining a better angle. We have a tendency of going underneath the play. Watch this official at Trail and see what she does. Oh, it wasn't the prettiest play in basketball, but ugly is not a violation. Trail stayed on top of the play. Stayed engaged. A lot of craziness going on, but not a violation. Great job staying engaged at Trail. Trail needs to always be Trail. Here's a play here as we're going, coming up the court with the ball. As you can see, Trail is leading the play. Trail must remain back. Stay behind. Keep all your players in front. This is a play where Trail had an opportunity to become Trail, and Trail led the play. Back court to front court. We have a situation where we, have, we need a visible 10-second count. We can't compromise on that. In college, they look at the shot clock. We don't have a shot clock. We need a visible 10-second count. Let's check this clip out. Okay, great job with the 10 second count. It was visible, but check his location. Great job with a physical count. You can see it. Now notice, the dribble drive went, is going below the free throw line, but yet he stays near the 28 foot mark. He, was, he didn't put himself in a position to be successful. Trail needs to be trail. In order to have credibility on your plays, you need to be at your required spot. Great job on the 10 seconds. You could have did a better job on location. Hey, I want to thank everybody for watching. I appreciate your time. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to Darren McClure out of Baton Rouge. He's going to talk about the center position. Thank you, everybody. Hey, everybody. Darren McClure here, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. All right, here's our basic starting position. I call this our home, home spots. You see center spots. Uh, he basically needs to straddle the free throw line. All right, once we get there, we can 
we can move a little bit. We don't want to go too far out, outside the bottom semicircle or too far to the left of the, uh, to the top of the semicircle. But that's our basic, our basic starting spot. In this image here, we see our primary area coverage. My coverage is green as center. Uh, it's our closest lane line up to half court and in the middle of the paint, all the way down to the uh, baseline. Uh, all that green area, that is my primary area coverage. There may be some times where the areas of coverage are intersect, and it's up to us as, uh, as officials to decide whose area it is. That's, that's what we get paid for. Okay, here we got uh, center. He gets to his initial spot, which is all good. We get, keep looking for angles, remember this now. We got a curl play that is coming right towards center. He's got the perfect look at this. It opens up right to him. I call this an easy call. If lead has a whistle on this, it would be a total guess. Center has the best look at this. Watch this again. Who, who is this opening up to? What can Trail see? And what can you always think about who is seeing the best look? We got a great angle. Center makes a call, points out our shooter, and everything's great. Up here, this is going to be uh, helping with transition after a rebound. Okay, well, right here, we, probably, we either had a rebound or we had a turnover. And where everybody's going in transition, we got two people that are left back there. And my, me, my personal opinion on this, Lee, Lee going to new trail needs to get this. Good that C stayed, he sat, good, he gets the call. We got a knockdown. Say, if we were passed on this, this, this could get ugly in a hurry. We got a knockdown, and C could have easily went with the ball. You see the ball comes past right in front of him, and the player gets it. He takes off. He could have easily made the decision to go with that. And if Lee wouldn't, doesn't make this new – Lee going to new trail doesn't make this call, we got problems. Great get by C on this. All right, guys, listen to this. This is, uh, goes back to our areas of coverage. Remember our green free throw line, closest free throw line for C. The opposite lane line belongs to uh, Lee. All right, we got a play that actually is somewhat, uh, it's going to be an intersection here. Centers, it's actually in center's area. It's his primary area of coverage. He needs to get this sooner. I have no problem with Trail staying on this play because there's a lot of bodies right there. You count them right there, if everybody stops and looks, there's six bodies in that little small area. Center needs to get this quicker. And he needs to get this quicker and make lead come rotate, and that way we got better coverage. If you look at lit center at the beginning of that play, he has nobody in his visual area. His, his primary area of coverage has got six bodies in it higher up. So go ahead and get to that quicker, pull lead over, and then you got new center. The rotation doesn't look bad. I just have, it needs to happen sooner than it did. This is really similar to what just happened, but this is in transition. We just crossed the, uh, the uh, mid-court line. Center does a great job of staying on this play. He is actually gonna pull the lead, but lead never comes. My only uh, thing with this that I don't necessarily like, I don't necessarily think he needs to stay at mid-court that long. Maybe look, you see where the coach is staying right there? That's basically where I would have probably went and got to get a good look at this, looking backwards, as we say. Look backwards at this, because what happens is lead never comes, 
And now he's got to get back to his home spot, right, at free throw line extended. Watch how long it takes him to get there. The ball is all, gets back to, to Trail's primary pass right there. That's Trail's primary. And he's still on it. He's got to get off of that. And to get off of it a little bit quicker, he would have been in a better spot. If he would have been a little bit lower, it would have helped him get to his spot quicker. Okay, on this play, we got a, uh, a center drive. It happens in transition, but it's still a drive from center. On drives from center, we're gonna stay with the primary uh, defender. We got primary defender, play to the basket, contact. We're gonna hear two different things on this. Uh, we can have, we got to play to the basket. It could be leads. It could be leads call. It happened, it happened opposite lane line on the contact, but we got a secondary defender becoming a primary defender really quick. We got two whistles on this play. I don't have a problem with that. You may hear higher ups say they don't want two whistles on this play. You can call it the quote unquote cadence whistle or delayed whistle by lead on this. But we get the call right. We both go hands up, fist, fist first, which is great because that could, that could cause us uh, a lot of headaches if somebody hit, makes one call and another. We got fist first, we delayed, we looked at each other, I'm taking it to the table, see he's got the right call, take it to the table, we're shooting, get them lined, leave and get them lined up, we're ready to go. Thank you for watching everybody. We're gonna pass this over to John Fletcher. Welcome to the lead mechanics module. I'm sure you've seen this schematic in the trail and center modules. It just gives an idea of where the three home positions are for each person in the crew. Lead is on the baseline, about one to two steps off the end line. Two basic positions, wide angle and close down. This is a good example of lead in the wide angle position. This is the position that you should obtain when the ball is coming down the floor and crosses the division line on the same side as trail and lead. You're gonna be about halfway between three point arc and the lane line extended. This is a great picture of working close down. Close down is lane line extended. Rotations are gonna occur from close down to close down. You're gonna hear me say that several times. This is the position that you should obtain when the ball is coming up the middle of the floor or on C side of the floor. Another thing we need to be acutely aware of is what leads primary is. Inside the three point arc, free throw line extended and a line drawn down the middle of the lane. The yellow area is leads primary. All three crew members need to know and be aware of what their primary is. Let's analyze this play a little bit. The ball is free throw line extended or a little bit below. There's a competitive matchup on the low block. Lead is lane line extended at the close down position. The ball, the competitive matchup, triggers the lead that he needs to rotate. In this situation, Lee does a really good job of rotating to get in position to referee this play. Once again, rotation is from close down to close down. Here's just another picture of Lee in the close down position. He's in a good position that if the ball is kicked back to the weak side, he's in a position to rotate from close down. This is another example of lead in wide angle. Lead is not in a position here to rotate. We cannot rotate from wide angle to wide angle. It's just too far to go and takes too much time to get there. Two things happen. We either late getting there if we decide to rotate or usually what happens is we don't rotate at all. 
it's acceptable to stop the rotation. Once we start a rotation, it is not complete until you get to the opposite lane line or have completely cleared the lane. This video should be a good example. Drive to the basket, Walker is blocked, but there is LeBron for the... Lead starts his rotation, gets almost halfway, realizes that a drive is imminent, and he's gonna be rotating during a drive, so he just stops and retraces his steps. Drive to the basket, Walker is blocked, but there is LeBron for the... Here's a really good example of Lead stopping his rotation. Good defense by Washita. As you can see, Lead almost gets to this opposite lane line, but he doesn't quite make it. And because he doesn't get to the opposite lane line, the rotation is not complete. He realizes that a shot has been taken. He stops, retraces his steps back to his original position. It keeps his partners in good position to referee both the shot and the rebound here. It's just great work by the Lead. And the three is good. It's also acceptable to have an accelerated pace. Most of the time when we go across the lane, we are just using a brisk walk. And outstanding defensively so far in this postseason. No team has scored more than 50 points against them. They get it outstanding defensively so far in this postseason. No team has scored more than 50 points against them. They get it. Do not rotate during a shot. Once the, sh the shot is imminent, we just need to hold or stop our rotation. Here's an example of rotating during a shot. The other time we do not want to rotate is during a drive. Have a couple of clips the pass. that are a good example. Inside take up and no good rebounded. For pass. Inside take up and no good rebounded. This would have been a good place for Lee to just stop his rotation and back out once the drive started. To retrace our, our take home points real quick. Let's don't rotate during a shot. Let's don't rotate during a drive. Let's rotate from close down to close down. Let's not rotate from wide angle to wide angle. And it's okay to have a little accelerated pace if needed. Thanks for your attention. We appreciate you being here and trying to get better.